seven years ago, on a battlefield, I lost what I believed in. Each time I went into battle, another piece of my soul died. I'm the mere shell of a man now. Nothing more than a killing machine. Some elaborate game that will determine the fate of the world, is that it? Then which player is going to be fortunate enough to checkmate fate, I wonder? I've played through Silent Bomber because you have no time to game. If we go back to the Dark Ages, the before times, when I was a wee lad, I used to go into my local town every weekend with my uncle. We'd grab a breakfast at the Weatherspoons or Burger King, then we'd have a wander around the town, and this wandering usually involved heading into a game store. Whether that was the old electronic boutique, game or game station, uh, occasionally I'd get a game out of this. The title game, Silent Bomber, was one such game, and little did my child brain know what I was getting into with this one. All I knew was it had a cool name. So what did I get? Well, this is what happens if you cross Bomberman, Metal Gear Solid, and an evil chess master. We all know they exist. To create a strange but still beautiful Silent Bomber from CyberConnect, the company responsible for such games as Shadow Escaper, Shinigami Missile, and Final Fantasy VII G-Bike. Oh, and you know, like the dot hat games, Fuga Melody of Steel, and copious amounts of Naruto games. Solid Bomber was released in 1999 in Japan and 2000 in the West, even in the EU. Um, for the PlayStation 1, it's, all, it's about as arcadey action game as you can get. So what's actually going on? I hear you gesticulate. Well, sometime in the future, 1,000 years after humanity has launched a space colony project, Earth has decided it's time to bring the disparate elements back together under one banner. And the way they go about doing this is forcing everyone to sign a treaty, written by the Union of Justice. Well, it's time for Planet Hornet, our planet, and the one that has been through several revolutions to form its current republic, to be coerced into signing said treaty. Disagreeing to the one-sided terms, they refused to sign, so the Union of Justice sent the 200km super battleship Dante with its planet-cracking weapon Felmion to either bring Hornet to the fold or destroy them. Hornet's response is to send 2,000 ships to battle, some of which are manned by our unlikely crew of convicts who are being sent to in to earn their freedom. We take on the role of Utah Fate a genetically engineered killing machine created by the previous military government, who, while following orders from his, from his commanders, murdered a large group of innocent civilians, and after being incarcerated and given a 300-year sentence for his crimes, had a mental collapse, leaving him an emotionless shell of a man. Due to, you know, having mass-murdered innocent civilians, it, it left a little bit a scar. Seven years ago, on a battlefield, I lost what I believed in. Each time I went into battle, another piece of my soul died. I'm the mere shell of a man now. Nothing more than a killing machine. He is now under the command of Amory, the only non-convict of our crew and the leader of the group. Uh, this group includes Benoit, a political criminal, master manipulator and chess aficionado, who just enjoys the thrill of manipulation. Uh, Mincino, Mincino, I don't know how to say his name. John and Tim. Yeah, the, the last three have no real value. 
they're, they're involved, but who cares? So, this is one hell of a setup for a plot. Massive spaceship, check. Intergalactic war, check. Cripple alarm, check. All sounds truly awesome, but uh, yeah, this is all from the game's booklet. Basically got none of this from the game. Never realised you targeted a criminal, not once. The game gives you some random scenes that make no real sense. Just Utah being Utah. But who cares? Let's blow shit up. The game is a classic case of greater than the sum of its parts. What, what we have is a top-down arcade shooter, well, bomber, where we navigate through increasingly complex levels and enemies. And for the most part, it's really well balanced. Utah is just another bomber man in different clothing. You start with a basic set of bombs that you can either drop or target the enemy and throw at them and then you press a button to explode them. You also gain some special bombs to expand your repertoire as well, but your main bombs are basically infinite, whereas the special ones, you have a finite amount. A lock-on mechanic is pretty cool. You get like this cone in front of you, and you can tap the buttons to throw bombs, and once you've locked on to an enemy, and then just press the button to blow them up. The next kind of mechanic around that, so like I said, you can tap the button lots, is the stacking mechanic. Um, Basically, if you stop and drop bombs behind you, you can stack them up. Or if you lock on and fire repeatedly, they'll stack up. The stacks do more damage over a wider area, but they can hurt you as well. So this can happen with all bombs, even if it's just one. But obviously, bigger radius from bigger stack, more damage. Beyond just blowing up your enemies, you can also blow up the environment quite a lot. There's like lots of different things will blow up, like screens, buildings, random debris, everything. And by doing up these blow up things, you that's where you find your special bombs, you get your health pickups, and you get E-chips. E-chips are the upgrade mechanic. They give you the option to add more bombs, expand your lock-on, or have better defense. And even better, it can be changed on the fly by going into the options menu. So you can literally, if you're struggling because the enemy's doing harder damage, go in the options, change your defense. If you've got lots of targets, Go to the options, give yourself more bombs or better targeting. Um, these special bombs as well. You've got three flavours. Napalm, which as you probably guessed is fiery death over time. Electric, which like zaps out and stuns the enemies for a second. Um, gravity, which sucks everything into it and destroys it. And obviously these can be stacked up for bigger and badder effects. I really love the full, full uh, gravity effect. The last bit is we have the movements, and it's really zippy. On the like round, like a cat on crack. Uh, you have your jump and climb jump, and then you have your burst, which is basically your, your like dash, dodge type thing. And you need all of these to stay alive, especially the, the dodge, because you can do that on the ground and in the air. So this game, as I said, it's simple, but it's greater than some of its parts, and it all works so well. So, because it's an arcade game, it also has like a grading system. But bugger me, was it hard to get a good grade. Basically, you need to blow everything up, keep your damage combo going, and not get hit. Um, and do it quick. <laughs> the grade is somewhat important, though, as it unlocks new characters for the VR Arena, a one-on-one -on -one battle simulator where you get to play some of the other characters and such. And it's kind of like you play co-op in it as well. It's kind of interesting, but not really my jam. Um, you also get uh, data chips, same way as you get e-chips, which are a lot more characters for said VR arena. So yeah, try achieve high scores. Good luck with that one. When I was younger, I do remember putting in some serious time to unlock the characters with my mates. But yeah, I didn't really do it this time. <laughs> That's the gameplay done. But is it all wrapped in something nice? Well, yeah, actually it is. The graphics are a solid like PS1 era graphics, but they actually look pretty good. The environments are kind of varied in their sameness, as in you're on a spaceship, but you get different environments in that spaceship, like the outer hull, vents, which are really closed in, uh, demented science labs, which kind of have a vaguely horror effect, and residential areas. Like, it's, it's quite varied. And it's all, like sci-fi like lots of metal and stuff but they come in different colors and different flavors 
but yeah, the, the graphics, like I said, are kind of PS1 era. They're a bit blocky, but they don't have some of that warping you usually get for PlayStation games. And it holds a steady frame rate as well, which is really appreciated for an action game. This all combines to help build up just what the, like, the Dante is. This big ship, spaceship coming to blow up the planet. The sound as well is actually pretty great. Like the sound effects are explody, which is what you want. The soundtrack itself is kind of punchy. Um, it's very techno. Like you have the main menu, which is kind of like techno ethereal. So you have fun level musics as well. Bosses have their own sound. Basically all fits without being obnoxious, except for maybe the explosions. So presentation wise, yeah, this is definitely a top tier PlayStation experience. Before giving you my final thoughts, let's have a quick look at what others thought. So I couldn't really find user reviews because the game's quite old, so no Metacritic user reviews. But I found some old reviews that came out during the time. So GameSpot, in their conclusion, put offering great control, compelling Twitch gameplay, and a fully realized game environment. Silent Bomber is one of the biggest surprises to come along in a long time. Yeah, I agree. It, did, it was definitely a surprise for little old me. I wasn't expecting what I got. And it's not kind of what you expect from gameplay. Like, we've all seen gunners, but we've not really seen bombers. Um, OGN, on the other hand, opened their conclusion with Silent Bomber, <laughs> Silent Bomber is at very least a rental, if not a straight out purchase. The clever twist on the shooter action style game is simple and yet just short of genius. It's a bit more brutal than Ashley is. The IGN review was kind of more positive overall. You know, we know what IGN are like. Um, I'd definitely say it's worth more than renting there. Why I own a copy. <laughs> Damn, but looking at these really show the age of the game. So my thoughts are more in line with GameSpot. I really enjoy the game. The game is solid. The visuals are great. The only real letdowns are the final boss is an absolute bar steward. Um, the difficulty gets truly ramped up at the end. Um, I know others have a problem where a mission where you have to defend a small spot. I didn't really have that much of a problem with it myself, but I can see why it would annoy people. Uh, the voice acting, for some reason, gets insulted a lot, but I absolutely love it. It's so PlayStation. So yeah, my overall rating is give it a go.